So one of the reasons I was teaching this class is for the decades I spent as an entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, there was no theory about entrepreneurship. We came up with what's now called the Lean Startup. But the other piece about why teach this as a class rather than just theory is that entrepreneurship is experiential. This is a big idea. Is that for years a capstone class in entrepreneurship would be sitting around and how to, how to write a business plan. Um, that might feel experiential, but it really didn't have all the components that entrepreneurs actually experienced on a day-to-day -day of building a company. One of the key things as a founder of a company is to be able to create a reality distortion field that sucks other people into your vision. We have no doubt that you as the founder can talk about the science. We want, by the end of the class, everybody else to talk about your vision as well or even better than you can. Jerry, was that what you said? Big idea for the rest of the class, not just about you guys. And it's hard to hear, and you will hear this and not believe this. People at the end of the day, most of them, aren't going to really care whether it's synthetic biology, nanocages, or anything else. They're going to care about does this technology solve their problem in a better way than what they're doing today. That might be incredibly depressing if you were one of those people in that cartoon that says, I spent nine years wrapping carbon nanotubes around whatever. It's not about your technology and what you guys will find out, and it sounds like you actually get this, and you get it well, and you'll get it even more well, is try to understand the domain you're after and a deep understanding of that problem, and then being able to say, let me explain to you why nanocage technology is exactly the right answer. Does that make, make sense? Yeah, yeah. Kind of Detail, geographic, social, demographics. You know, they're 24 years old, they're male, they're a city dweller, their title is X, there are key issues they need to solve for their company or their services Y, or they're researchers in a lab that look like this. There are some very detailed and painful processes, and the surprise for most of, most of our life science teams who actually want to do that is the amount of time and dollars required. Great. Very important in biology. Because a lot of times you're going to find that your MVP is really a data set. In other words, that your MVP is not the thing itself or a device, or it, but it's data. And it may not even be data you've really generated, right? It may be hypothetical data. You want proof. Well, what kind of proof would you want, right? And it would be data. And then you could come back, not in the same interview, but later and say, if we had data that looked like this, not even saying it was proof, but saying with this data, if we could achieve results like this, be compelling to you. Because that's an MVP. It's not necessarily that you've gotten the data, but if you had this data, and that's what an MVP is. It's not that you built the thing. It's does this convey what it needs to convey? We found that in agriculture, we found it in biotechnology, we found it there. Therapeutics. It's exactly what you're talking about when you talk to big pharma. What is the data that big pharma wants to be interested in? One of the most important things your company must do to make the business work. In the life sciences, those things are pretty unique. What's the IP? Intellectual property. Do you need any patents? Turns out that therapeutics. I'm here. And, and if you're in web and mobile, you know, you never even think about patents. If you're in therapeutics, you can't leave your bedroom until you have a you know, provisional patent in the patent school. This is not a class that you learn by just simply attending the classroom lectures. This is a class where you actually got to be committed to spending the time outside the building. It takes a lot of work and effort, but the payoff is huge.